founder of Experience Dynamics, and it's time for this week's UX Power Up. Today in mobile UX, I'd like to talk about the term skeuomorphism. That's a mouthful, and maybe you've seen it or heard it in the news recently. Apple is a company that's known to put out a lot of skeuomorphic designs, and these are designs that use visual metaphors that mimic real-world objects, you know, like a leather uh, or a wood kind of grain, something like that. And one of the things that's been in the news lately, and it seems to just the story keeps getting recycled, is that Steve Jobs really liked skeuomorphism, and that now that he's gone, Apple has kind of like killing that or, you know, removing skeuomorphism as a design approach in their uh, interfaces. So, uh, I personally wanted to share with you that I actually think skeuomorphism is fine. And it's not uh, something that should, it, you know, to me it's not like, oh, you should get rid of it. Skeuomorphism can be very, very helpful to carry metaphors, to carry real, real world metaphors over into the virtual space and into the mobile space. And things like a spin wheel or a pie menu, you know, that, um, you know, you might have something similar in the real world that you bring over that metaphor, the interaction with it. Um, but some visual design and some skeuomorphic stuff is just inappropriate and just doesn't look very nice. So it's, to me, it's more of a case of what's tasteful or artful and what's not. So I think it really, really depends on how you're trying to use it and what you're trying to use it for. I think that there are three benefits of skeuomorphism, and I'd like to share those with you. So the three things that I think are potentially beneficial to skeuomorphism are, and these are kind of like tips or benefits, if you will, of what good skeuomorphism can do for a design. First of all, it should be subtle, and it should indicate subtlety. So if skeuomorphism is the most obvious thing you see, like if you look at a design and you go, oh my god, that's such and such, and all you're thinking about is the real world object, to me that violates subtlety. So skeuomorphism should just kind of sneak in, and then maybe you notice it, maybe you don't. Um, you know, maybe you unconsciously notice it. That to me is a good use of skeuomorphism. The second one is aiding orientation. Good skeuomorphism should aid your orientation to a screen. In other words, your navigation or what to do on that screen. You go, oh, I know what this is because it sort of has a pattern that I'm familiar with. I'm not sure how I'm familiar with it, but I'm familiar with it. Uh, let me give you an example from Mint.com on their mobile app. They had a little uh, summary of a receipt for their expenses, you know, the things you're tracking. And here are the numbers, here's the data, and, and all this is is really just the receipt to show where this category, food, restaurants, or whatever, was showing spends and total amounts. And they laid this on a background, fairly subtle background, with a very subtle kind of receipt. You know, it actually looks, looks more um, jagged here, but in their design it was much smoother and very, very low key. And it was kind of like a receipt, like an actual, you know, receipt from a, from a uh, cash register. A good use of skeuomorphism and in relationship to Mint.com's overall visual design and their metaphors, it fit in. So it, it kind of complemented the style or personality of their design, but also it should help you orient to the page so that you know what it is. The third one here, which relates to orientation and subtlety, is that skeuomorphism can help you activate a, or help your user activate a mental model. Let me define mental model real quick. So the mental model is the assumptions, expectations, beliefs, kind of the baggage, if you will, that a user brings to your design. That's the, their mental model, kind of their set of expectations, assumptions, and so forth. So skeuomorphism can ha help, you know, kind of get you in that feeling of familiarity or help your user go, oh, I know what this is because it, it kind of reminds me or looks like X, Y, Z. Again, I think it's a case of whether it's appropriate to do it with your design, uh, whether it aids you know, the personality, the orientation, if you can keep it subtle and it doesn't get in the user's face, and thirdly, 
if it helps activate a mental model in, in a way that's elegant, that isn't disruptive, then good reason to use it. So those, those are the reasons why I think skeuomorphism won't go away, shouldn't go away always, and, um, uh, and just to give you a little bit more insight into uh, that as opposed to the tabloid version of, you know, kill it, keep it, kill it, keep it. Anyway, happy UXing. Take care.